Stevie Verb. New German dance on Strictly. I really want to bounce back for them as well as myself. Harry Ship's Wheel on Emmerdale. <laughs> and Squeaky Elbow on EastEnders. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> Party Wars now on rapidly emerging digital channel Living. The premise is who can organise the best party? Brilliant. And just what the schedules have been crying out for. <laughs> And the big star this week was former X Factor finalist Stacey Solomon. The party that I'm having is probably worth, I think it's worth about 10,000. 10 grand? But I am never going to pay that much money for a party, so I'm just going to call in as many favours as possible. I've been on the phone to everyone I know and anyone, and I'm just like, please help me, please help me, please do this. No. <laughs> It was a very special day on EastEnders this week. Come out tonight. What's this? What well, he says it is. Special night at r &R's. Happy Monday. Yes? Happy Monday! So, how did the residents of Albert Square spend their Happy Monday? <laughs> oh, I don't go for me. Hey, you've gone too far! Monday to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Of course, Carol was still mourning the loss of Billy Jackson. It went to her stomach and she went on a sick run. Oh, fine. Where's it been? It's a quiet drink. Yeah, it looks like it. I'm looking all over Walford. I found her by the swings. Oh, oh my God, he's rushing on! Hey, it's the new Olympic sport of the sick run. <laughs> Would you, um, thank Mickey for looking after me? Yeah, that's what he's here for, to look after us. He's one of the good guys, eh? He's all right. <coughs> you join us at the EastEnders 100 metres sick run. Carol's off, and she's holding on to her sick nicely. No other runners as yet, but what's happening back at the kitchen? Bit of a late start, but Ricky's off. It's very difficult, as you know, to hold on to your sick like this. Ricky's doing a sterling job, and well, he's making remarkable headway. He's racing through this course. He's closing the gap with Carol, and surely it's anybody's sick run now. Oh no, he stuffed it. He's been sick, and so he's disqualified. Oh dear, Ricky's blown it. Ugh. Oh, actually, seeing all those people being sick, it's, it's made me feel a bit... Oh! <laughs> 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 oh. Actually, I, I'm all right, it's gone. <laughs> To get them. Yeah, I managed to <clears throat> swallow it back. <laughs> I felt sorry for Billy Mitchell having a personal problem flagged up like that. Time changes nothing for you, does it, eh? Still the same old self pity, still the same old skid mark. <laughs> <laughs> might not be, might be a new one. <laughs> I'm wondering whether he might benefit from some sort of wet wipe. Still, things abruptly picked up for Billy when his old friend Julie suggested a clever way of flogging veg. So, Stew in a bag. What? Stew in a bag. Stew in a bag. <laughs> yeah, brilliant idea. I want one. Right, who's going to have me last one? Who's going to take pity on me? Otherwise, I won't hear the last of it from her. Oh, cheers. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's the last stew in a bag. Luckily, <laughs> I bought mine earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Carol. Oh, that's charming. That is the last stew in a bag and you spewed in the bag. <laughs> no, it's not a stew in the bag, it's a spew in the bag. <laughs> oh, there's nothing for it. <laughs> <laughs> Push, 
I didn't get a stew in a bag because Billy had sold out. I don't suppose you'd sell me yours? Uh... <laughs> what should we say, a fiver? A fiver? Billy was selling it for a pound. Well, take it or leave it. <laughs> oh. Oh, good, it comes with gravy. <laughs> now then, I've been asked to make a little announcement. There's been a spate of weird people going around the streets tempting people with muffins. Hello, hello, hello. Who wants a muffin? Would you like a muffin? Come on, sorry, you've just walked into the muffin zone. Remember, kids, never accept a muffin from a stranger. That's right, it's The Apprentice. They call me Hell. They call me State C. That's not my name. That's not my name. My name is Alan Sugar, and one of you will be fired. <laughs> I must say, he's been on great form, though. Some of the gags he's been coming out with have been pure gold. Here we are at Fortnum & Mason, famous for its afternoon teas. Whether it's fancy cakes and pastries like these, or whether it's everyday bread rolls, this is turning flour into serious dough. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Lord Sugar. Slam dunk, what that crowd? I heard the expression breadwinners. I'm looking at six bread losers here today. <laughs> Not so good, that one. <laughs> this week the task was to manufacture and sell baked goods. And it must have been cold in that bakery. They do say that you lose 80% of the heat from your head, don't they? Well, Stuart wasn't taking any chances. If I was doing the pitch, I'd definitely be getting the orders. I'm an amazing Two hats. <laughs> yeah, I like to wear more than one hat this cold. <laughs> 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 Let's just take those off because otherwise I won't. I won't feel the benefit. Yeah. I won't feel the benefit when I go out. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's it. <laughs> Which brings us to uh, this week's Apprentice in a Nutshell. This week's Apprentice in a Nutshell. As a doctor, I may be a bit of a business virgin, but I know that I've got the intelligence and the entrepreneurial spirit to succeed. You're fired. <laughs> this week's Apprentice in a Nutshell. I wonder what Hugh Fernley Whittingstall is up to down at his river cottage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to intrude on a private moment. <laughs> <laughs> this week, Hugh was bigging up the breakfast. A scattering of those croutons prepares the way for the star of the show, the lovely local black pudding. And there you have it, the perfect summer brunch. A full English breakfast salad. <laughs> that was a crime against God. <laughs> Everyone knows that the full English breakfast is a national symbol. Wow. This is one of the most celebrated meals in Britain. And you know what? I'm actually a bit of a fan. A recent survey named the full English as the thing that most uniquely symbolises Britain, beating the royal family into second place. Now. <laughs> I like the royal family, but then I like the full English breakfast. <laughs> Which is better? There's only one way to find out. <laughs>
Welcome back to TV Burp. Robot Becky on Coronation Street. What, for throwing a sick At least I sure do. Apologise to Roy. <laughs> Zach has mini heart attack on Emmerdale. Do you know how many people have tried to kick us out before? <laughs> no one's kicking anyone. How would you like if it went up to your house and tried to evict you? <laughs> Dermot gets a bit fresh with Mary on The X Factor. For the time being, we give you Mary. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit worried about Cheryl. She seemed to be developing symptoms of an illness. I don't know what it is. You do something to me where I just... I'm covered in goosebumps. I'm, I'm like, head to toe. Uh-oh, the malaria's back. <laughs> Simon was a little bit down on Storm Lee. Uh, Storm, um, look, you're like a sort of like a singing fly because you're just <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, I got one of those. <laughs> there he is. Uh, uh. <laughs> Off you go then. Very moving, actually, because uh, I know for a fact that his his dad's been ill. <laughs> of course, my favourite is Wagner, and the big question is, Simon. I've got to ask you one question: Are you getting it on with Mary? <gasps> well, of course they're not an item, no, but uh, they used to be. Oh yeah, I've done a bit of research, and they had a child together in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> let's welcome him now. Introducing Wagbo. <laughs> Master Wagbo in his cage Hasn't had his dinner and he got in a rage Mary was his mummy and Wagner was his dad But this little beggar, he turned out bad Master Wagbo <laughs> It seems agitated <laughs> It's a scam! <laughs> If you see Wagbo, let us know, but do not approach it, as it is dangerous. <laughs> I've heard that it might be heading for Blue Water about midday on Tuesday, so... <laughs> if you see Wagbo, please send in your pictures or video footage. <laughs> I must say, isn't it weird when your shadow looks like a mole, though, eh? He was saying... David just drove straight at him. <laughs> <laughs> It's Coronation Street, and Graham was still in his coma, but he was still helping out by playing the theme tune on his breathing tube. Make this quick. <laughs> yeah, the old breathing tube. <laughs> Graham. <laughs> run over by David Platt, who looks like he's going to be banged up for a very long time indeed. So there's nothing sentimental about having a car driven at you full pelt, right? <clears throat> no, I'll bet. Uh, I hate to say it, but I don't even think David can get away with it this time. Mm. It's going to be a long, long time before he comes walking through that door, let me tell you. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> looks like his nits have cleared up, though. Well, well, earlier, he had a terrible time with nits. So why didn't you put the brakes on when you saw Graham? You see my problem <laughs> last time. Yeah. Actually, there seemed to be an outbreak of nits on the soaps this week. Yeah. Billy had them on EastEnders. <laughs> oh, that's a good and I like that one, Billy. <laughs> Outbreak. We've had a couple of cases at the TV burp office, so what I've done, I've trained one of them up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alan the Knit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what Alan's going to do, he's going to climb up the ladder, right, go across the tightrope, uh, off the diving board, do a triple somersault into the swimming pool below. Uh, I'll just get him. <clears throat> That's it. That's... Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, there he is. Uh, OK, so... Uh, yeah, that's it. Pop him down there. There he is, yes. And... Uh, <laughs> all right, make your way... Make your way to the steps, then, Alan. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> drum roll, please. OK, he's up on the first step. Second step. Third step. Four, five, six. OK, along the tightrope. Off you go. Oh, there he is. Look, he's very nervous. Oh, he's making his way along the tightrope. Uh, OK, on to the, the diving board. There he goes. And off you go. Wee! Triple somersault. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the scores from the judges. Oh. Yeah, nice one, Alan. Take a bow. Alan? Oh, I forgot to teach him how to swim. <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, Horizon this week dealt with the subject of illusions. Magic Singh is a master of illusion. His livelihood depends on his ability to confuse, trick and deceive. It's something magicians like him have been doing for millennia. <laughs> Weird, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Magic Singh. Sorry about that, mate. My finger slipped that time. <laughs> so that's the magic circle. <laughs> yes, it's amazing how the... It's amazing how the mind can play tricks on you. Can you trust anything you see with your eyes? Do you think seeing is really believing? The beautiful thing about illusions is that they make us realise things are not always quite as they seem. Yeah, it's clever, that, isn't it? It looks like a small bloke on a chair, but it's an optical illusion. Yeah. I've set one up there, look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks like a small bloke on a chair, but it's an optical... Uh, you're supposed to get off, and if you get off, and then we can show them how it... I can't get down. <laughs> no, you weren't. It was supposed to look like... It was supposed to look like an... Op... <laughs> That's a point. Uh, it seems that the reason illusions work is due to the way our brains are wired. If we were to process all of the information that we feel that we are aware of, we would have to grow huge brains and have massive heads that our bodies would just fail to support. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV Highlights of the Week. <laughs> TV of the Week. <laughs> Motorway Madness now on Channel 5, which follows the daily goings-on at Strencham Service Station. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, boring, the boring. <laughs> Give it a chance. We had four deliveries at once, and the fact that this one was a rather large one of 25 cages, we've had to put another two pallets of water outside, which came at the same time, two pallets of pick and mix outside waiting to come in as well, and we've also had a book delivery. Boring, <laughs> the boring. I'm going to get out there now and have a look at the tables and the customer seating area, so make sure that's all clean and tidy. Boring! <laughs> Boring! It's Sunday on the bank holiday weekend, so we're full tonight and we have no bat... At least half the rooms in the hotel have no bath towels. Hang on a minute, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I find myself being drawn into the story of the lack of towels in the Premier Inn at Strencham Services. They've been drying since I've been here, and it's now like an hour and a quarter on, and they're not drying at all, so 
I really do need more towels from somewhere else. She needs more towels. There's 50 people need drying off. There's no towels. The washer dryer's taking an age. Oh, the twists and turns of the towel shortage at the Premier Inn and Strengtion Services. The emergency towels arrived just in time. Thank God for that. <laughs> because for a moment there, I mean, it was touch and go. <laughs> I mean, how are you supposed to dry yourself off without a towel? <gasps> well, you pat yourself down with toilet paper. <laughs> but the biggest attraction by far is coffee shop worker Amy, who's full of beans. I just love to chat. I just chat to everyone. Hello, can I help you? Well, most people just describe me as bubbly. Loving it, loving it loud. I like singing. <laughs> I don't even realise I'm singing. I'm just behind the unit and I'm just like, la da da. Do you think you might be drinking too much coffee, Amy? I think I'll just bring a bit of laugh to see you now. He'd miss that little bit. Two small cappuccinos to drink, take away. <laughs> They'll still get their little uh, Amy fix, I suppose. I know what she means. I think I need my Amy fix. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Amy! Yay! That's all from us. Good night. <laughs>